How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. As you guys know, I went coil on my bike and with that, I actually got the cascade link as well. But as you guys can see, it's orange and orange does not go with my bike. So what I want to do is attempt to take off the anodized color on this. This is actually my first attempt on trying to do this. It looks pretty straightforward. Um, what we're going to be needing for this project is going to be just pretty much an oven cleaner. Easy off is what I got and what my friend used and it works. So I'm going to stick with that. I also have a polishing rag or have a couple polishing rags, some polishing compound. I've always loved using this uh, mag polish. I also bought some stuff from Harbor Freight, like with like a couple bucks or so and some polishing like uh, wheels. I don't think I'm going to use these on this project, but I will be using the little ones. These were like three or four bucks and also a dram mill to polish it out. You don't necessarily need a tool like this, a rotary tool. Harbor Freight sells it for like 20 bucks, a nice little kit. It's worth having it just for little things here and there. It helps out a lot. It helps you a little bit on the manual labor, but you can do it just with the uh, polishing rag. Okay, so let's go and uh, start with the project. And make sure you wear gloves as well because this thing is highly corrosive and it will dry your skin and hurt it and damage it. So if you want to have silky smooth skin still, I highly recommend putting some gloves on. Also, try to wear like some kind of clothes that you don't necessarily need anymore or you don't mind getting dirty because when you use tools like this, there's a good chance it's going to splatter some uh, material everywhere so you don't get your shirt all messed up. Go ahead and wear like a used shirt that you don't care about and gloves. Okay, so here we go. This is how I'm going to take off the bearing on this. As you guys can see, the bearing goes out only one way and that's outwards from the middle. So what we're going to do, we're going to get a pretty much a socket that fits in the middle of the uh the bearing let me see let me show you from the outside first as you can see like if it's pretty good from the middle like that so i'm gonna actually do it from the inside like so and then i'm gonna get the extension go right through the middle of that and you guys should be able to get the idea now slightly tap out and uh it should come out with a hammer so let me try to do this on camera the best way to do this is to put this on the wood you know so that way you're hitting it, but since I'm trying to show on camera right here, I'll probably do one side. Just like taps. There he goes. And as you guys can see, it went right through. It's still good, so that's good. She added that before you take out the bearing, go ahead and spin them. Make sure what quality or what condition they're in right now. So that way when you take them out, if they still feel the same, then go ahead and reuse the bearings. But if you feel like you made flat spots on the bearings while hitting it out, then go ahead and replace that bearing. But so far I got lucky with this one. It's buttery smooth so I can use this bearing again. I just got to figure out how to push it from the outside race. So we're going to go ahead and remove the other side and then move on. All right, so we're out here now. You want to be in a well-ventilated area. This stuff does smell, so you want to make sure that you have plenty of space to breathe. I went ahead and used the little like Halloween buckets, anything you're not going to reuse again. So I use a coat hanger so that way it can kind of float and I can spray like every little inch from the little ink. So I'm going to go ahead and start spraying from the top, work my way down. I want to completely cover this up with the easy off. So let's go ahead and try this out. You don't want to breathe this stuff. I'm going to cover it really good. Okay, I think I got the bottom pretty good. Let's just go ahead and flip this guy down and get the other side. You want to leave it like around 10, 15 minutes or so. Just keep an eye on it. <clears throat> okay, so we're about five minutes into the, uh, the process. As you guys can see, the orange is literally just dripping right off of it. All right, we're back now. So we're going to go ahead and uh, hit this up with a little bit of water first. Hopefully it just falls right off. As you can see, most of it came off. I'm gonna hit it with the toothbrush. Just try to take some of the stuff off. Okay, yeah, it looks like it needed a little bit more time. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dry this off for now. And then I'm gonna hit it one more time. Oh shit. For the most part, it's coming off pretty good. So yeah, I wanted to take off some of the junk from the trunko. As you can see, most of it is off. Let's spray it down one more time, another 10 minutes or so, and we should be good to go. All right, so it's been another 10 minutes or so. I scooted the bucket a little closer to the camera. Let's go ahead and wash off the oven cleaner. All right, looks like we got most of the color off, if not all of it. 
So it did darken the material a little bit, but don't worry. This would all come back once you start hitting it with some polish. Just like magic, como magia. It's all off. As you guys can see, it's pretty dark. Most of it's out. It looks like I'm missing some spots in the inside of this. That's why I brought the toothbrush. You should be able to kind of scrape it out a little bit. So for the most part, like the main areas are pretty much clean. I'm happy with that. There's no orange anywhere else except these little crevices. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray a little more inside here. Let it sit for a while and let it burn that off. And then we're going to go ahead and start the polishing process. All right, so we're back now. The piece is all dried up. Let's get that close. Hopefully the camera focuses on this. So there you go. I was able to get everything from the cavities. It's pretty good. I missed a couple spots here and there, but this is actually going to be covered up on the bike anyways. And it's not really a big deal to me. So one thing you want to do is make sure that it's nice and dry, which it is. Let's go ahead and get to polishing now. I'm going to go ahead and show you that you can get a pretty nice finish just by hand. Like I said before, it's just going to be a lot of elbow grease. So take your time on this. So for now, let's just do a small little area. Let's start on, uh, let's do a nice little flat area like right here. So make sure I get that in the camera and just turn up the brightness a little bit so that we... Okay, there we go. Turn up the brightness a little bit. Let's just start rubbing. So like I said, it's a lot of elbow grease that you're going to have to be doing. Rub, rub, and rub. And it's already starting to show like a good amount of shine. So let me continue rubbing this and then I'll get back and uh, show you guys how it goes or how it looks. Start seeing it polishing up. I'm going to use uh, the rotary tool now. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit here. Where is it at? Where are we working at? And then start with a... So you want to start with a slow spin. Let me actually point this away from the camera just because... Um, let me see what I can do. Start with a nice slow spin. I'm trying to be careful not to hit my camera. You want to wipe off the excess and then you want to keep going until you get desired shine. So I'll be right back in a second. So I had to polish a little bit off camera just because it was getting it everywhere and I didn't want to get my lens messed up. But for the most part, you guys can see how it's coming out. It's coming out pretty good. Let me try to focus on this. The shine looks really good. Um, let me get something with color again. So you guys can see. Look at that mirror finish. Look at that mirrored finish. Oh my God, it looks so freaking sexy. So you can use this process for pretty much anything that's anodized, kind of like seat clamps, um, grip clamps, whatever you want to use this on if it's anodized. So that way you don't have to go ahead and just buy another color in case you want to just go all chrome, which I think is, looks really nice and it pops into any kind of bike. But yeah, we're going to keep going and uh, I'll show you the finished product. Okay guys, we're, we're back now. I'm gonna go ahead and polish up the whole link. I think it came out pretty good. So let me go ahead and reveal this to you. How it came out and bam. Look at that baby. Let me see if this focus is good enough. Let me try to get the camera to focus on. Look at that. Ooh, baby. Nice and shiny. It did take some time. I highly recommend getting the rotary tool. I think by hand, I probably would have developed some carpal tunnel. Um, but yeah, here it is. Came out pretty nice, I think. So yeah, there you go. So if you guys want to do the anodizing and you know, polish it up, anything you want to do on your bike, maybe the, like I said before, the clamps, whatever you want to do, it does take some time. The Rory tool helps, it's almost essential for this. Full disclosure, please don't blame it on me if you mess it up, but it's pretty foolproof. Like I said, it's just, as long as you take your time, listen to some music while you do this, it comes out really good. Oh, you gotta love it when something's super shiny. Um, I was able to get in there too. I was actually surprised about that. Get in there a little bit. Not perfect, but still pretty good. All right, guys. So since I showed you how to take off the bearing, might as well show you how to put it back on. Well, all I did is pretty much go to Lowe's. It was about $2.75 to get a bolt, a couple washers, and a nut. Um, let me see if the camera's going to focus on this so I can show you. All right, whatever. You're going to have to take my word for it. It's $2.79. Okay, so here we go. Let me go ahead and show you how I do this. Um, already got one bearing in, so I'm going to go ahead and you got to make sure that it's clean from the inside where you're going to put it in. So that way it goes in there nice and smooth. We're going to put a little grease on it. Just a little, just so it can slide in there really good. 
and also not get freezed up in there with time if it gets water inside of it and we'll put a little bit on the bearing itself where is it there it is like so good to go and then we're just going to position this into the link somewhat even it looks pretty good right there um and then we're going to go ahead and put our tool together here i'm going to try to do this on camera it's kind of hard to do this because um you know like i said it's just hard to do because you have to go perfectly straight on this so i'm going to try to do this as best as i can so here we go we got a bolt and a washer bring that through and you get whatever you want to press the bearing in with remember just that just make sure that it grabs the outer race only okay as you guys can see there's a lip since the bearing goes in the inner race of it it's actually longer than the top one so what i did i put the little this wrench that's bigger than that and i brought that through like so put the washer one with the bolt like that and then where's the nut So that's what I did. I actually, like I said, I used the wrench just to make sure that it can pop out from that side. And I pretty much just grab this. Normally you don't have to do this because most of the races are the same like thickness. This is just a little special occasion. And then I just tighten it until I feel some tension. And there we go. The bearing is pressed in. So I'm kind of tightening up both sides and they squeeze in the bearing inside. Let's take this off now. There you go. It's flush against the back. It's good to go. Both bearings are in. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hopefully this was somewhat informative and helpful and gives you ideas, you know, what to do when you can't ride your bike. So there you go, guys. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys out on the trails.